My name is Tony Hayward and we've been fostering for nearly about five years now. And I'm Tony's wife. I'm Linda Harewood and same amount of time fostering. Uh, I'm Hannah Smith and uh, I'm a foster carer for Greenwich and we've been caring for about, we've been approved for a year. A year and a bit. A year and a bit. My name is Rincey Evans and I've been fostering for Royal Borough of Greenwich now for 25 years. My name's Livy Gibbs. My husband Stu and I have been foster carers with Greenwich for coming up to three years. Uh, we've got three children um, of our own as well at home, 14, 12 and 9, all boys. Um, so we're fostering with our own children in the household at the same time. My name is Adrash Berhe Gavra Um I've been fostering almost for 14 years. For four years I've been independent agency and I moved to Greenwich 2009. Hi, I'm Ronnie Murphy and I've been a foster carer with the Royal Borough of Greenwich for 14 years. My mother, years and years ago, was the foster carer, somebody that I looked up to and I knew I would end up doing this because we were always involved and I just thought, oh, this is something that I'd really like to do myself. So here I am, 25 years down the line. I could probably say that it was Linda got into this because of me. When we first met, um, I, 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 knew, I knew this girl many years ago who, um, cut the long story short, she'd lost her, both her parents in quick succession and she was ended up being fostered and when I met her, I met her foster carers and it just absolutely opened my eyes to it all and I thought, okay, one day when I'm settled, I would like to foster and I put that to Linda very early on. On our second date. There you go. Tony told me that he was going to be a foster carer, that it was something that he felt very mm. strongly about. I never had children of my own and I didn't actually want children of my own, so it's a bit strange. But I just felt that none of us asked to be born. It is a bit of a lottery how your life is going to work out, uh, depending on what part of the world you're born in um, and then you know what sort of parents you have. It can be a really good life or quite a struggle. So I think children um, have no say in lots of things that are going on. And I just wanted to try and put right some of the things that weren't great in their life by fostering. I worked as a, a teacher for about five years. Um, and during my time as a teacher, I saw a lot of children who were in care um, I worked with uh, a child who was evicted from their home just before Christmas um, and a child who uh, lived with their grandmother um, and their grandmother needed to get into hospital and so the child was in care for a couple of weeks. Um, and it really opened my eyes to the need for short-term carers, um, not people who were crusading to save the world, but people who were just available and to offer a stable and loving home. Um, so that was what prompted me to, to think about foster caring. Fostering is something that's always been really close to my heart. Um, before we had our own children, I was aware of the struggles that some families face just from a lack of support, lack of resources, um, difficulties in parenting skills and emotional capacity. And just felt like actually it's a responsibility of all of us in the community to care for children who are really vulnerable. I get involved with fostering um, because I grew up with a lot of children. I mean, with a big family in my home. And it is good to give something in return for someone else to have that chance to have and my children they have. So that's the reason because I don't know, because I got a lot to give and I got the ability to look after children as well. I'm a lawyer, so I represented some uh, people who'd had their children uh, taken away from them. And I'd also represented some teenagers in the youth courts who were um, looked after children. And so I think we both had recognised the need for foster carers um, and for providing that sort of safe environment, either mm -hmm. for a short time or for a long time. I have a good and a bad placement, which is, I don't call it bad, but it's challenging. And since I've been with Greenwich, I had a lot of different children from different background and a different age group as well. When I say it's hard, it's, it's, it's challenging. Um, probably because I'm a lone carer, so it's all me doing it. 
we've only been fostering for a few years, but we've already experienced some, some challenges in our placements. Um, when allegations come and you're accused falsely of not treating a child in the way that you should, or when you've got a lot of reports to write and a lot of kind of data to try and capture, fitting that into a, a busy week can be difficult. Uh, we've also found it difficult saying goodbye to children, knowing that we're not in control of where they go next and we need to let them move on. There's been sadness and some grief in those moments, but also lovely memories and we have always uh, held on to some of the things that have happened while children have lived with us and been able to reflect on them afterwards. I think in the very beginning, when I first thought about fostering, I was probably a little naive. I thought that all you needed to, to give the children was huge amounts of love and affection and cuddles and things like that. I didn't realise some of the issues that these children bring with them and, um, and also the safeguarding aspects of touching children and, and you know, cuddling, it, you know, it has to be in context. It's very difficult sometimes doing emergency because it's very quick, it's you know, not planned, you don't know what child is coming through your door, you get sometimes a very small amount of information. Um, so that can be a bit challenging, but mostly I've found um, if, the, if the children, especially teenagers, if they've been through a, a, a stressful time, the previous few days, they mostly just want something to eat and to go to bed and, and sort of calm down. We have uh, a placement now at the moment, don't we? Short-term foster care. Um, might be becoming long-term foster care, so we'll have to wait and see, find out about that really next year. The best type of foster care that I, I think is um, I enjoy most, I suppose, is, is ongoing long-term, where I might have children one weekend or two weekends a month because you do get the opportunity then to build a relationship and um, you get the chance then to see any improvements and changes in those children. We didn't want to wait until our children had grown up and left home to start fostering. We actually felt like one of the things we could offer was to be being a family at the same time as fostering and fostering for us was an extension of caring for our own children. We wanted our children to be involved in the process. We wanted them to know what it was like to invi invite other children into our home, to live with us, whether it was for a short time or a long time, to experience a loving environment, to be part of a family, to have security and an identity with us. And we felt that we knew that our children could actually benefit from being part of a fostering household. My children, they have so much empathy now for everyone. Their eyes were really opened once we started fostering and I think they have become better people. They really have because they can empathise now with people, they have compassion and although they had it, they, they now got it in abundance. They learn a lot um, from it. Any child that comes to our placement, they are cooperate with the children, trying to help, and they make them that to see a different angle of children's life, and I'm grateful for that as well. It was a big question for us, wasn't it, about whether we should um, care for children through foster care first, or whether we should have our own children first, and we decided to uh, go into foster care first. I would say our children are a really good role model um, and I can't think of any children that have come here that haven't loved our children. Um, There's been some challenges. Yeah. But that's to be expected. I think you can't you can't do the job without expecting challenges. It has been everything that we've hoped for. Um, it's been wonderful. It's it's really really rewarding. It is really rewarding. I think. Um, I suppose it was probably a big part of the uh, training and um, initial um, process of um, doing the application, just realising that foster caring, um, we might be going into it for something that's rewarding, but it's, it's the worst possible thing for the child that you're caring mm. for because they would like to be with their parents. So mm. from their point of view, then it's, it's not the ideal situation, obviously. Fostering is my biggest achievement, I think. 
um, because at the outset, I, I'll be honest, I don't think I was an ideal candidate, to be honest. I had no children of my own, recently separated, uh, had some health problems, and I thought, yeah, it's not looking that great on paper. Our current placement is uh, really stable, really wonderful. Um, he's a really loving little boy. Um, we really love him. We fell in love with him very, very quickly, didn't we? Yeah, he's he's very endearing. He knows how yeah, he knows, endearing he, know, he is. He knows how <laughs> and to he make, plays up to yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> he knows how to make people love him. But it's true. Yeah. He's, he's, a, he's, a, yeah, he's a wonderful uh, kid to be around, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's very he's funny. To see a child smile, that's the most rewarding. And I don't know, you see them changing in everywhere. Um, the boundaries, the routine, and you see the attending school regularly and progressing in our education, that's the most rewarding for me. It's a big step to take and you have to think how it's going to impact on your family and your home life. Um, but think of the rewards as well. It's, it is a very satisfying job. And it is a job, it's a career. It's the most rewarding thing anyone can do. And I would actually say, if you have a spare room and can do fostering, taking one child, even if you only foster and make a difference in one child's life, you will have done a great job. Fostering's also been really supportive because we've got a good training package that keeps us all on our toes and helps us to develop professionally. So. Each year there's a range of things that you can do to develop your skills and your experiences and make sure that you're always growing as a foster carer and that's actually a means of support. And we're a really friendly bunch. Um, the foster carers love a good cup of tea and a natter with each other. Whether you're having a great time or a really difficult time, I think there's always someone you can talk to about it and there's a lot of experienced foster carers that can help newbies like us with some of the things that we come up against. The training and the support we get from Greenwich is second to none. I honestly think Royal Borough of Greenwich is the best borough to foster for. All foster carers in Greenwich uh, complete a portfolio of training in their first year to ensure that we're all following the TSDS, which is the training standards that we all work to. Um, what that means basically is that we're looking all the time at how we can make sure we meet the national minimum standards for best practice in fostering, covering everything from understanding child development, behaviour management, health and safety, but also looking at how to develop yourself as a carer, how to look after your own emotional well-being and, and the well-being of your family. And so we spend quite a lot of time in that first year looking at our practice, looking at what we would do in a situation, actually creating a literal portfolio, a, a big folder um, of records. And that can be quite a daunting task for a new carer. So it's really helpful to have someone who's a little bit further on that can say, let me give you some help with that and assist. Mockingbird Project is a project that um, tries to create an extended family for a group of carers and their looked after children. Um, we are like the grandparent, or I would call myself a matriarch, um, and Tony would be the patriarch, and we are central to the project. We have two empty beds that we have always available for children um, should they need to come and stay with us or for whatever reason. Um, so we don't have children in placement and this is what's different from a regular fostering role. Yes. Um, and the whole point of the project is to create an extended family, which we do with our satellite families. And it's to support children from a wider community sense. And support carers. And support carers to stay in their role. We've heard about the Mockingbird, or we had heard about the Mockingbird network, and um, we have joined a Mockingbird network. Um, so that's gonna be starting in the new year. Um, so we're excited about that, and I think we certainly see that we'll be, um, um, we're not the sort of hub carers, so we're not, um, but, but we're one of the other families that, that are involved. And I think we certainly see ourselves as, as taking sort of an active role in that. Mm. Yeah, we definitely feel like we've got a lot to offer because we know, we know that placements last longer when people have the right support. 
um, and that placements only break down because people can't carry on alone. Um, and so we feel that having been through a really challenging placement ourselves, then we feel like we've got lots to offer um, other people. So we're really excited about getting involved and, and helping other people out. Every child deserves to have a mockingbird family. It is the way forward. I think it's really important for people to foster because providing children with a safe and secure base and lots of love and affection does affect their uh, feeling of self-worth and it's a very positive thing to do if you can improve a child's life. If you have a spare room, if you have a lot of um, patience, understanding, if you can commit yourself to caring and putting that person's needs before your own, go for it. Absolutely go for it. You will never regret it. To anyone that's thinking about becoming a foster carer, I would say definitely go for it. It's not going to be what you expect. Nobody will be able to give you the blueprint, but you will find such an adventure. Um, you'll know that what you're doing is making a huge difference to children's lives, that you will be forming a person right in front of your eyes, that you will be um, coming into their world at the time that they most need it. And you'll be able to use your life and your history, your relationships and your skills to bring benefit to somebody else. And there's no job I'd rather do.